Hey y'all, it's game day and the Houston Astros are going to Anaheim to face the Los Angeles Angels in a must-win series. Today's a must-win game because even though the Houston Astros are coming off a sweep of the Colorado Rockies, the Oakland Athletics are coming off a seven-game win streak against the Cleveland Indians and other teams. And their lead in the AL West now is cut to one and a half. So the Astros need to build some cushion to tonight in this series. And the lineup they're bringing out to do that is right here, right here. I don't even know. Um, in the parentheses is the weighted runs created plus, And if there's an asterisk, that means they have not played enough to qualify for the leaderboards. So leading off for the Houston Astros is Jose Altuve at second base. Michael Brantley will be um, hitting second at left field. Carlos Correa at shortstop. Jordan Alvarez will be the designated hitter. Elemis Diaz will be playing first base. Cal Tucker will be at right field as usual. Chazzy Fizz at second field. Jacob Wilson will make his second game, second start as a Houston Astro at third base. And Martin Maldonado will be catching for Zach Ranke as usual. Now for the keys to the game, the Houston Astros, just like every other team when you face the Los Angeles Angels, have to neutralize Shohei Otani and Part of that is limiting exit velocity, which Granke has done pretty well so far. Shohei Otani this year, this season, averages a 93.9 exit velocity, which is top 1% of the league. And when he faces Zach Granke, he's only averaging 82.3 miles per hour exit velocity. So Zach Granke has done really well. That's over a 10 mile per hour velocity dip, um, exit velocity dip. So that's really good. Um, he needs to keep it up though. Otani loves fastballs as well, which you know might be weirder because Zach Greinke does not throw the average fastball that a major leaguer does. But a huge, huge, huge part of this, and Zach Greinke would need to step up today, is he needs to throw up and in to Shohei Otani, or he needs to throw low and away. Because if you look at the zones, Shohei Otani has not been hitting the ball very hard from these two quadrants, or is it quadrants if it's nine? But he's not been hitting pretty well from these two areas. And if you look, everywhere else is high, high, high exit velocity. So Zach Ranke cannot miss tonight. And he does have pretty good command. But if he makes any mistake, expect Shohei Otani to punish it. Zach Ranke cannot miss. And that's a huge part of tonight's game plan for him. Especially low and away. Low and away seems to be working a lot more effectively than every other zone, but up and in is also a very good zone to work at. On the flip side, the Houston Astros have six players with an expected weighted on base average over 315 against Patrick Sandoval, which is very good. Uh, 315 is a league average. And if you can't if you count Chas McCormick, then that's seven players. But he's only had one at bat and one plate appearance against Patrick Sandoval and it was a home run so I don't know if I really want to count that since it was just one plate appearance but you know it seems like the Astros have been doing really well and at the same time though even though Correa has a 403 expected weight on base average against Patrick Sandoval what would he do because his expected slugging is 114 so that's not very good over there but he's been getting on base, I guess? I, I I don't even know. This is expected stats, so it's not like literal. It's more based off what kind of contact Correa is producing. Heading second, we have the Los Angeles Angels, and they're going to lead off with their star DH, Shohei Otani, followed by one of the best contact hitters in baseball, if not the best, David Fletcher, and then followed by Jared Walsh. That's a scary first three. And then they have former Astro, Max Stassi, He's been great this year. Jose Iglesias is um, hitting at shortstop fifth. Uh, that was bad, my bad. And then Joe Adele is returning. Um, he's played a few games this year, but he didn't start the season on the roster. He'll be in right field. Brandon Marsh will be in center field. Juan Lagares will be in left field. And Jack Mayfield will be at third base. Now, one of my, uh, one of my keys to this um game actually was will experience kill because three of the four angel leaders in expected way to on base average against Granky are Suzuki who has 29 at bats against Granky, um, Adam Eaton who has 12 at bats and Justin Upton who has 54 at bats against Granky and none of these three players 
are are starting the game. So three of the four best Angel players who have the highest expected weight on base average amongst the squad against Granky will not be playing. So that's that's weird in my opinion, but it is what it is. The second game plan though is to scout on your first time around. Because Granky's weighted on base average the first time is pretty good. It's 267, which is below league average, which is, a, which is a good thing for the pitcher. But when you're at the second or third time, it gets pretty bad as the weighted on base average goes to 327 and then 342 in the second and third time, respectively. And his FIP is pretty horrible at the second time around the order at 5.47. So, if Granky's doing well in the beginning, you might as well use that at bat to scout and see what he has, and then take that and learn from it for the second and third time, given that Granky is not as good at the, at the second and third time anyways. So, that's the key for both teams. Again, this is a must-win for the Houston Astros. The Angels are basically eliminated at this point. They're 500. They're not going to go anywhere. The Astros, though, are in the hunt for the best... Um, the best um, seed in the AL, first of all, but the Oakland Athletics are also catching up in the AL West, so they need to catch up there too. They need to build some cushion, and tonight's a must win, and this is how both teams can access that win. I'm a classic man.